everybody, and welcome back to another Pokemon Challenge video. Last time, we went back to the Gala region for a little bit and played through the game only using the Alolan starter trios, Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio, without any items or even using Dynamax. Today, we're continuing our current little mini-series where we go up through the regions, playing through with certain characters from the Pokemon anime. Today, we're going to the Hoenn region and playing through as one of Ash's late game rivals in the Hoenn anime, the orange-haired, rice-ball-loving Morrison. As always, guys, it would really mean the world to me if you click the like button down below, only if you do find yourself enjoying this video at any point, of course. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell as well. And if you want to see more videos just like this as soon as you're done with this one, you can check out the playlist seeing all the Pokemon challenges I've already done on the channel thus far. And shout out to these awesome people for leaving comments on recent Pokemon challenge runs. I'm really glad to see you guys enjoying the videos, and it really means a lot to me seeing a whole bunch of people comment down below. I'm the type of YouTuber who refreshes my comments constantly. I just love hearing from you guys and interacting with you as much as I can, so be sure that no comment goes unnoticed here. With that being said, let's jump into this run and see how easy or how difficult it would be for Morrison from the Pokemon anime to beat Pokemon Emerald. Let's jump right in and find out! Morrison was one of Ash's rivals toward the end of the Hoenn Saga in the Pokemon anime. He's the kind of person who likes to challenge other people to pretty much anything, challenging Ash to various things such as racing or even food eating contests. He can be immature and overconfident, however, and when he has to battle somebody he considers a good friend, it causes him to become depressed and not know what to do showing he doesn't hold winning to a higher degree over friendship. Because of this, Ash is the one who eliminated him in the Evergrande conference. But if that wasn't the case, could Morrison's Pokemon become the champion? Well, for starters, let's look at the Pokemon Morrison has. His main Pokemon is his Metang. When Ash first met him, it was still a Beldum, evolving during a battle in the Evergrande conference. His other Pokemon consists of Girafferig, Growlithe, Swampert, Steelix, and Gligar. For the purpose of this run, I want it to be a fun run, but also challenging. So as per usual, I'll be using a team of three Pokemon, and I would like to use his main Pokemon, Metang, along with the two weakest Pokemon he has. Swampert is obviously out, and we've already done a Girafferig solo run on Pokemon Silver. So out of Growlithe, Steelix, and Gligar, I chose to cut Steelix. As for the trio of Gligar, Growlithe, and Metang, they are all fairly slow, with Gligar being the fastest with 85 base speed. Metang and Growlithe have 50 and 60, respectively. Gligar and Metang are really strong defensively, but none of these three really have great special defense, and the best attacking stat that we have to work with is Gligar's 75 attack the average being around 70 for everyone. Their moves are pretty standard, but it is worth noting that Gligar's level up moves are horrendous. No ground type moves upon level up, meaning we won't have a damage dealing ground move until the TM for Dig after Watson. With that being said, let's quickly go over the rules for this run. Of course, I'm not allowed to use any items in battle, as always. Held items and Pokeballs for HM users are fair game, however. Metang, Growlithe, and Gligar are the only Pokemon allowed to participate in battle. Metang will start as a Beldum and is the only Pokemon allowed to be evolved. Arcanine and Metagross are not allowed, and Gliscor didn't exist yet. And I must play on the game mode set at all times. As always, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and if you do find yourself doing so at any point, don't forget to leave a like on it. With that being said, let's jump into this run and watch as Morrison from the Pokemon anime beats Pokemon Emerald. We begin our adventure as a young boy named Morris. Morrison wouldn't fit. I choose Torchic as our starter Pokemon. While Morrison did actually have a Swampert, it would actually be the most difficult Pokemon for our team to face, as all of our Pokemon are either weak to water, ground, or both. Upon reaching Old Ale Town, I open our PC and find three Pokemon inside, Morrison's Beldum, Gligar, and Growlithe, who I named Jump, Gavin, and Katie, after three trainers from the Evergrande Conference. 
two of which Morrison defeated to progress onwards. We get the jump on May's Mudkip, and after talking to Wally and our dad, make our way through the Petalburg Woods north to Rustboro City. Since this is a team run, levels are always harder to come by, so I make sure to fight every trainer in sight. This gets our trio to level 10. Our moves are all really bad for Roxanne at first glance. However, Katie's bite is special in Generation 3, and that's going to be our biggest damage dealer for this gym. And that is the first gym challenge versus the rock type gym and its leader, Roxanne. At these levels, we struggle to even reach Roxanne's ace in nose pass, meaning barring pretty crazy luck, we're not winning being underleveled. So I go train Katie and Gavin to level 14, hatching a plan for the gym. It's going to take some teamwork. Leading with Gavin as our best bet, and using the combination of his sand attack and poison sting to whittle both of her Geodude down and force her to use her two potions in the process. By using sand attack even just once, it makes her already inaccurate moves much more likely to miss allowing Gavin to poison with Poison Sting and then switch to Jump to soak up some damage. Jumping back and forth between Gavin and Jump to Poison and Tank forces Roxanne to use her two potions, and then I can send Gavin back in to begin using Harden for her nose pass. Unfortunately, Rock Throw gets a critical hit, however, taking Gavin out and causing us to lose that attempt. I forgot to give Gavin and Katie Orin Berries, had they had them, we would have won that try. So the very next attempt, with berries in hand, Gavin forges a path for Katie to come in and bite Nose Pass down. Nice teamwork, you three. There's the stone badge. One down, seven to go. We rescue Pico and then ride on Briny's boat over to Duford. I deliver the letter to Steven Stone and then return to Rustboro to get the experience chair. As always, this is vital in a team run. I give it to Jump and then head straight to Slateport City, clearing out Team Aqua and fighting every trainer to the north of the city, getting the entire team to level 18. After clearing out the for Gym Trainers, Jump is level 19, and with a few wild Pokemon knockouts in the Granite Cave, Jump hits level 20 and jumps straight up to Metang, learning Confusion and Metal Claw becoming much more useful. I guess you could say it took a big jump. And now it is time for our second Gym Challenge versus the fighting type Jim and its leader, Brawly. We get the jump on Brawly, one-shotting Machop with confusion, breaking Metatite's focus and taking it out as well. And then his ace, Makuhita, goes down to two more uses of confusion. Wow, that really is a jump in power. First try, there's the knuckle badge. Two down, six more to go. Time for our next rival battle with rival May. She leads with her Lombre and I lead with Katie. Bite flinches it, and then we get hit with Nature Power Swift, and one more bite takes it out. Then her Slugma comes in. It lands a rock throw, but then Katie gets a critical hit bite, taking it out as well. And her ace, Marsh Stomp, is all that's left. I switch into Jump directly into a Mud Shot. We hit it with Confusion, and then it uses Bide. I take this opportunity to switch into Gavin and use Sand Attack. He then poisons it with Poison Sting and keeps throwing sand in its eyes, and it eventually goes down to the poison. We reach Mauville City and grab the Mach Bite, then defeat every trainer to the east, south, north, and west, biting Wally's Ralts with our brand new pair of black glasses. And after fighting all the gym trainers, it's time for our third gym challenge. Versus the Electric Type Gym and its leader, Watson. I lead with Jump against his Voltorb. I want Jump to do as much as it possibly can before Katie and Gavin come in. His Voltorb manages to do half of Jump's health, but it still takes out both Voltorb and Electrike before going down to Magneton. I forgot to give Katie a Cherry Berry, and she gets paralyzed after it survives an Ember. She stays fully paralyzed, but manages to take it out with an Ember, going down to his Ace Manectric the following turn. It's all on Gavin now, and with him having no good method of dealing damage, I assume we've lost the fight. But for some unfathomable reason, Watson uses Thunder Wave on Gavin over and over and over again, showing no sign of stopping. He's completely broke. Gavin poisons it with Poison Sting, and I keep using it as it continues to use Thunder Wave. We use up its Citrus Berry, and then I remember, oh yeah, Gavin learned Quick Attack, so I switch to that, forgetting about Static. Gavin gets paralyzed by that, prompting Manectric to stop using Thunder Wave. 
Maybe that's why it was using it. Gavin can be paralyzed, just not by Thunder Wave. Really odd occurrence here. Regardless, Gavin quick attacks through Watson's items and secures us our third badge. First try, there's the Dynamo badge. Three down, five to go. Making sure to clear out all the trainers as usual, we make our way to Meteor Falls, running into Team Magma and Aqua. On the way here, we picked up the TM for Secret Power and Dig. Both of these are amazing physical upgrades for our Gligar Gavin. Dig is only 60 power in this generation, but it's well needed stab. We then give chase up to Mount Chimney and have our first battle against Mexi from Team Magma. I lead with jump against his mighty Yenna. Two hits from Metal Claw prompts Maxi to use a healing item, and three Metal Claw hits after that takes it out. Next is his counter up, obviously, and this doesn't look good for jump, but I decide to stay in command. Confusion hits it, and it goes for focus energy. Another confusion confuses it, but it hits through with magnitude five and gets a critical hit. But Jump survives. Jump gets it all the way to red, but unfortunately Maxi has another healing item and it snaps out of confusion and puts Jump down. Amazing effort though, buddy. Gavin comes out and uses Dig, taking out Camera Up, and then finishes Maxi off with secret power. Upon reaching Lava Ridge Town, we grab an egg from the old lady at the Hot Springs. Comment down below if you want and guess the closest town in relation to where you think this egg is going to hatch. I'll give a shout out to the first person to get it right the next time we get an egg in a challenge video. Last time, it was Lily Cove City. Will that be the case for this run too? Get your guesses in. Shout out to Amparo Lopez for being the first to get it right in the Tracy Sketch It run. And also shout out to Bomani Tyreek for actually getting the location exactly right. Nice job. Time for our fourth gym challenge versus the fire type gym and its leader Flannery. With Gavin having a ground type move finally, I figured this would be really easy, but it was a bit more complicated than you would think at first glance. Dig one shots her Nummel and Slugma but just barely fails to knock out her camera up. And with the sun being summoned previously because Dig takes two turns, Overheat blasts Gavin dead, causing us to lose the fight. This takes a lot more attempts than you would think, but her camera up does not always knock Gavin out in the sun. He manages to survive more than he faints, and this prompts her to use a healing item on camera up while we quick attack. This deals enough damage for the following Dig to take it out, but that doesn't solve her ace Torkoal. Dig does less than half every single time, and while I had a strategy to beat Torkoal without Gavin, we didn't need it. He got a critical hit, knocking it out in a single shot. I'll take it. There's the heat badge. Four down, four more to go. Upon making our way back to Petalburg, Katie gets an upgrade to Ember in Flame Wheel. I also get to pick a fossil. I choose neither. Didn't see that coming, did you? And once we make it back to Petalburg City, we have our fifth gym challenge against the normal gym and its leader, our father, Norman. I lead with Jump against his Spinda. It confuses us with Teeter Dance, but Jump snaps out quickly and takes Spinda out. He then takes Vigoroth out and is still in pretty good standing. As our father's ace, Slacking comes out. Dark is special in this generation, so its faint attack doesn't do too much, and because of its ability Truant, it cannot attack every other turn. It makes Jump drowsy, so I switch for Katie to intimidate it. It then makes Katie drowsy, as she uses up its Citrus Berry. I then send out the star for this fight in Gavin. I lower its accuracy just in case, and then use Secret Power for damage while it's loafing around. By using Dig on the turn it can attack, it will never be able to hit Gavin. Using this strategy, Gavin takes it out, only leaving his Linoon left. And with Katie's help, we finish our father off on the first try. There's the balance badge. Five down, only three more to go. We crush Team Aqua out of the Weather Institute and then face our rival May once again. Katie goes on a rampage against her, taking out both Lombre and Slugma, and even doing a substantial amount to her Marsh Stomp. Had it not crit us, Katie could have done it by herself. No matter, we make it to Fortree and grab the Devon Scope and use it to enter the sixth gym. And halfway through the gym, the egg hatches into a why not? If you said Fortree City, you were literally correct. Time for our next gym challenge, the flying type gym 
versus its leader, Winona. I lead with Katie and take an interesting approach. I go for Roar. This drags her Tropius out, and it gets one shot by Flame Wheel. Her Pelipper then comes out. This thing is incredibly annoying with Supersonic and Protect. I send Jump into battle, and while it takes Pelipper out, it took a beating in the process. Her Ace Altaria comes out next and takes Jump out with a Dragon Breath. It then proceeds to take both Gavin and Katie out, but we are doing way more damage to it than I expected. We just need better luck against Pelipper. I do not use Roar this time, and instead just Flame Wheel Swablu dead. And after Jump beats Pelipper this time, it's at much better health and wasted Winona's healing item. Jump and Gavin together manage to defeat her ace Altaria, with her Tropius coming in next. It summons the sun, and while it solar beams Gavin out of here, Katie comes in and uses the sun Winona summoned to her advantage, flame wheeling Tropius and Skarmory down. There's the feather badge, six down, only two more to go. We also get the TM for Aerial Ace, which is yet another amazing upgrade for our Glagar Gavin. And Gavin even sweeps our final rival battle with May. once we reach Lily Cove City, giving us access to the department store. I buy a bunch of TMs inside and teach Fire Blast to Katie. We clear Team Aqua out of Mount Pyre and then take the Magma Emblem directly to Maxi of Team Magma. He's no issue whatsoever, and neither is Aqua Admin Matt back in Lily Cove. This opens the way to Moss Deep City, where I grab the King's Rock to give to Katie, and then enter the home of our 7th Gym Challenge. The Psychic Type Gym, and its leaders, Tate and Liza. This was our most difficult and biggest roadblock thus far. So much so that I was about to go do some training, but I ended up having an incredibly good attempt full of hacks in my favor. I lead with Gavin and Katie, intimidating Claydol and Zatu, and then sand attack Claydol. I want to cripple Claydol's attack as much as possible, as Earthquake destroys Jump and Katie. Zatu's a big threat as well. Using Calm Mind, its psychic is deadly. I swap Katie back in for another Intimidate, and Gavin's Aerial Ace gets a critical hit on Zatu, doing massive damage as it calms its mind again. Earthquake hits and does over half to Katie but doesn't affect either Zatu or Gavin. Gavin's Aerial Ace takes Zatu out, and Katie's Fire Blast strikes Claydol, doing solid damage and burning it in the process. This burn was 100% necessary for our success. It misses Earthquake on Katie thanks to Sand Attack, and now that Claydol is basically out of commission, we focus our efforts on Lunatone. Aerial Ace and Bite take Lunatone to half, but Claydol's Psychic takes Katie out right after. Jump comes back in and Lunatone flinched thanks to Katie's bite. Claydol and Lunatone both target on Gavin, but Gavin and Jump both target Lunatone, taking it out right after. They use a Hyper Potion on Claydol and Solrock begins to charge its Solar Beam. Jump and Gavin together took Solrock down low, using up its Citrus Berry. In an effort to save Gavin, I have him Sand Attack Solrock, but it hits him anyways, leaving this all on jump. Claydol thankfully missed, and Solrock was brought to red by Metal Claw. They heal Solrock, and Claydol lands Earthquake, but it hardly does anything thanks to being minus two attack and being burned. Jump gets a critical hit Metal Claw, taking Solrock out and getting the attack boost, and Claydol thankfully does not get a critical hit with Earthquake, allowing for Jump to finish the twins off. There's the Mind Badge! Seven down, only one more to go. Next, we team up with Steven Stone to clear out Team Magma from Moss Deep City, and he has a Metang of his own. A man of taste. Together with the power of Metang, patent pending, we take Tabitha and Maxi down. Then using Dive, we storm the seafloor cavern and grab the TM for Earthquake. This immediately goes to Gavin, being a 40 power increase to his previous best move in Dig. To showcase this force, I use him against Archie, and together with Jump, we clear Archie out as well. To fix the problem they caused, we head to Pacific Log Town and grab the TM for return. This also goes on Gavin, our MVP by far. In hindsight, it would have been better on Jump, but oh well. After getting Rayquaza from the Sky Pillar, we enter the eighth and final gym challenge of this adventure, the water type gym. Time to face its leader, Juan. I teach Jump the TM for Sandstorm and lead the fight with Gavin against Juan's Love Disc. Earthquake takes it out in one shot, 
and then it does over half to Whiskash, who only used Amnesia. The following Earthquake takes it out, and then his Celio comes out. Being four times weak to ice, I call Gavin back and send Jump into battle. It cuts it really close, but it manages to take Celio down, as Juan's Crawdon comes out next. Jump summons a wicked sandstorm before getting taken out, and then I send Gavin back into battle. Earthquake does over half, and it strikes him with a crab hammer, but Gavin survives and finishes Crawdon off, only leaving his ace, the horrible, evasion-abusing Kingdra. But that's what I'm gonna do to him. With Gavin's ability Sand Veil, it misses Gavin, and two Earthquake hits, with assistance from the sand, is enough to take Kingdra out. There's the Rain Badge. All eight badges of the Hoenn region are now ours. It is time to head to the Pokemon League. First, however, we have one final rival battle with Wally. I lead with Gavin against his Altaria, but decide to switch and let Jump handle this. Jump takes out Altaria and Delcaddy, but goes down to Magneton. Gavin then comes back in, taking out Magneton, Roselia, and then his Ace Gardevoir, opening the path to the Pokemon League. I get everybody on the team trained up to level 62, and then use my rare candies I've collected to take everybody to level 64 for the Pokemon League. Here's what the team is looking like going in. Let's do this! First is the Dark Elite 4 member, Sydney. I lead with Jump, and with his newly learned Meteor Mash, he smashes Sydney's entire team into the ground. Next is Phoebe, the Ghost Elite 4 member. I lead with Jump once again. I taught Shadow Ball for this. It's a physical move in this generation. Unfortunately, because Dusclops put a curse on Jump, it ends up going down. But by surviving on a single hit point, he took out both Dusclops and a Bayonet. With Gavin coming out, clearing out the rest of Phoebe's team. I delete Shadow Ball for the move Brick Break and jump into battle with Jump once more against the Ice Elite 4 member Glacia. Brick Break eventually takes her lead Celio down and then her Ace Wall Rain comes out immediately. Jump ends up taking it out, but it barely survives in red. But because Jump's a Steel type, Meteor Mash one shots both of her Glalie and then two more Brick Breaks finish off her final Celio as it misses a blizzard. Time for the final member of the Elite Four, the Dragon-type user, Drake. I lead with Katie for this fight. I found out she has the hidden power of ice. This would be especially good for his Flygon and Salamence. Though, from Shellgon protecting a lot, Katie gets hurt badly by Rock Tomb, but corrects her speed with agility. A critical hit hidden power takes out Shellgon, and his Flygon comes out. Hidden power doesn't one-shot, despite being four times super effective, and it takes Katie out with Earthquake. I send Gavin out and use Aerial Ace as Drake heals Flygon. Aerial Ace doesn't do a lot, so I take a risk and go for Guillotine, and it lands, getting rid of Flygon in a single shot with a one-hit KO. His Kingdra comes out, and I don't really want to deal with it either, so I use Guillotine again, and it hits again, taking Kingdra out with a one-hit KO. His Altaria comes out, but Guillotine misses, and then it misses again, and Altaria sets up a dragon dance. But the final Guillotine lands! Gavin's on a rampage! Guillotine Gavin, let's go! He's all out of them, however, and goes down to Drake's ace, Salamence, but not before taking it pretty low and using up its Citrus Berry. With our final Pokemon being Jump, I send it out, and it gets blasted by a flamethrower, but luckily survives the hit and finishes Salamence off with Meteor Mash. It is now time for the champion of the Hoenn region! With two of our three Pokemon being weak to water, things do not look good for the Water-type Master Wallace. After all the fun Gavin had in the last battle, I think to myself, oh what the hell, why not? I lead with Gavin against Wallace's Wailord and use Guillotine, getting a one-hit KO on Wailord. His Tentacruel then comes out, and while Guillotine is tempting and hilarious, it's not necessary. Earthquake takes it out in one shot. I don't think Aerial Ace will be enough, so I opt for Guillotine for his Ludicolo. Landing again! Gavin's a monster! His Whiskash comes out, and I assume it's gonna use the move Amnesia like they tend to do, so I go for Earthquake instead, but it uses Surf. Gavin survives the hit, however, and finishes Whiskash off with another Earthquake. The biggest threat on his team, his ace, 
My Lodic comes out next. I know, I've got to land a guillotine here, or we have no chance. Guillotine Gavin strikes again, snapping my Lodic in two, only leaving one Pokemon left, his Gyarados. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and Guillotine Gavin misses, getting knocked out by Surf. And then his Gyarados proceeds to take Jump and Katie down. We've learned a lot though. It is totally possible and feasible for us to beat Wallace using Guillotine. It's a valid strategy. I just need to minimize the amount of times it is required to use it. And I'm gonna do that by leading with Katie against his Whale Lord. If Katie and Jump together can defeat even just one Pokemon, that is one less time we need to rely on Guillotine. With Katie holding the King's Rock, she flinches Wailord with Bite multiple times, using up one of Wallace's items before going down. But Wailord is now in the range of Earthquake from Gavin, so Gavin takes it out, and Tentacruel comes out just like before. Another Earthquake takes it out, and Ludicolo comes in once again. Instead of risking Guillotine, I use Aerial Ace. It does survive, but only used Double Team. Aerial Ace doesn't miss! So Gavin takes it out with two more while Wallace heals. I once again use Earthquake on Whiskash. We know Gavin can live a surf, but it doesn't matter. He used Amnesia. Only two of Wallace's Pokemon remain, and we only need to land Guillotine two times in a row. We did that against Drake. It is not impossible. Guillotine Gavin strikes my Lodic dead, and once again, all that remains is his Gyarados. And with one final guillotine, Gavin, our Gligar, has defeated Wallace, and Morrison has become the champion of the Hoenn region. But he isn't done just yet. He has one final battle to overcome against Stephen Stone in Meteor Falls. He leads with a Skarmory, and I lead with Katie. Flamethrower takes it to red, and it misses us with Toxic. Katie then takes Skarmory out, and his ace, Metagross, comes out. Katie takes it really low with Flamethrower, but it takes Katie out with an Earthquake. She used up its Citrus Berry, though, allowing for Gavin to come in and finish it off with Earthquake. His Armaldo comes out next. It's not weak to Earthquake and has Water Pulse. It does a lot of damage to Gavin, so I switch Jump into a Slash. Meteor Mash misses, but on the next turn, hits and takes it out, getting an attack boost in the process. Claydol's up next, and we're speed tied. It puts up a Reflect, so I break it in the next turn with Brick Break. It puts up a Light Screen, which doesn't matter, and the following turn, it outspeeds and Earthquake's Jump. Jump survives! but then misses Meteor Mash again. But then, Jump out speeds and finishes it off. Speed ties are roller coasters. Brick Break smashes Agron, but it survives and finishes Jump off with Thunder. Guillotine Gavin comes in and takes Agron out after Steven heals a ton. And with his only Pokemon left being Cradley, Gavin isn't able to do it, and he can't use Guillotine since he's a lower level. On the next attempt, I switch Jump into Armaldo immediately, saving a lot of Gavin's health. I then switch for Gavin to fight Claydol. Gavin gets badly hurt, but takes Claydol down and is in command for his Agron. Earthquake takes Agron out, and with Gavin and Jump both still standing, Steven's Cradley was no match for the both of them. There you have it. Morrison has become the champion of the Hoenn region and beat Steven Stone as well, using his Metang, Growlithe, and Gligar Gavin. And he has won this game. I just absolutely adore the Hoenn region. The third generation is so nostalgic to me that any run I do in the Hoenn region will automatically be an awesome experience. I grew up with the Pokemon anime since the beginning practically, and Morrison was always one of my favorite characters from the Pokemon anime. It's sad to think that a lot of people watching this video may not have even been born when Morrison was a part of the anime, since it was towards the end of the third generation, so I'm glad to have gotten to showcase him to so many people that may have never even heard of him. And
And of course, getting to use a Growlithe and a Gligar in the Hoenn region was really unique and a lot of fun. And same with Metang. You don't normally get to use a Beldum or Metang in the main story of a Pokemon Emerald playthrough. So all three of these were just really fun to use and they worked together so well and it made for every single battle to be as interesting and unique as they could be. I upload a Pokemon Challenge video just like this one every single weekend on Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and maybe even sometimes other days too. So don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so already, and ring that bell to be notified of all of them in the future. And check out the playlist if you'd like to see some more right now. And of course, leaving a like down below and a nice comment as well before you go also goes a really long way to help the video and the channel, and it makes my day that much better getting to see from a new face, potentially. Also, be sure to look at the poll pinned down down below in the comment section. I'm asking you guys which Sinnoh anime character you would like to see me play through as next. Right now, it's between Zoe or Nando. So go ahead and vote on the poll and tell me who you voted for down below. Want to see one of the first challenge runs I've done here on the channel? It's one of my favorites by far. I highly recommend you checking out my Delmai solo run from Pokemon Ultra Sun. You can find a link to that video over here. Or of course, there's a playlist for all the Pokemon challenges I've already done on the channel thus far over here. With that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video as always, and hopefully I'll get to see you guys next time for another Pokemon challenge video. Until then, hopefully I'll get to see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching.